Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today we have got a new update from Planet Zoo. It's been a little while, they've been quite quiet, but it's fine to see that, good to see that we're going to get something new from them soon. So we've got this little post here that was posted today. We've got Planet Zoo color variation. Now, color variation within the animals has been a very, very commonly requested thing. I've been requesting it, the whole community's been requesting it. So it seems like the team of Planet Zoo finally heard what we've been calling out for and finally given us what we want. So we'll read this post. Hey all zookeepers, thank you for all your brilliant support. We're excited to show you a snippet of what we've been working on the last couple months and we'll be sharing more news of what else we've been up to very soon. So that's going to be cool, something nice to tease. We've been intently reading your feedback regarding animal color variation and we've spent many hours researching realistic and well-documented variations to bring you accurate depictions of our animal roster. As a result, we've been working on bringing you varying color for the majority of animals with subtle differences to a couple of animals that have a large variety of color. We've been going further into the into uh, further in the to detail how genetics will impact your groups, herds, and individuals in the next couple of weeks, and we'll be going in depth of what you expect in our next update. So now that's pretty interesting because I'm kind of curious now how much this is going to impact your genetics. Like, will you be able to focus on breeding certain individuals to get either more chance of a morph or? different colors or different shades within that so it'd be really cool to see how that's going to impact the genetic system because something like that is what like the genetic system is kind of made for so you can really customize what animals you kind of want and what how you want them to kind of look i feel like that's even though that's not like in the conservation view of this game that might not be the most interesting or most important because it's just color morphs even if they're wild color morphs, they're kind of not really important in terms of conservation. But for a zoo game that's a video game, it adds another level of management, and I think that'd be pretty cool. And if they're found in the wild, then why not? It's just a natural color variation. It doesn't really matter too much. So the animals will be characterized in subtle, medium, and major variations. But we'll aim to give this treatment to as many animal species as possible. We haven't done it for all of them. Exhibit animals and some habitat animals won't have these changes, largely due to either their environment being too densely packed to benefit from it, or there not being any clear variation occurring in the wild. Today we'll be showing you one example from each category. So, now that's pretty interesting. I understand like some animals, like elephants or rhinos, might not have that much variation to speak of, but I find it kind of weird that they didn't put anything on the exhibit animals, especially animals like reptiles and frogs, where in captivity there's a lot of very common morphs, which um, obviously are bred for like designer for people to have as pets, but there's a lot of interesting morphs that zoos keep and a lot of different variation even within wild animals that would be kind of cool to have with exhibit animals, but alas, they're kind of an afterthought. I don't see how it would really affect them too much. It's just, it's just a nice little extra icing on the cake, but that, I, that doesn't really affect the game too much. So here we can see, this is the subtle one. So we can see this very subtle difference on the American bison. We can see the first one there, it looks like it's more the original color, and the one in the, in the front, on the right here, looks like it's a little bit uh, duller, or a little bit more chocolatey. So you can definitely see that's just really nice subtle little difference. It really gives a little bit of character so you can like look at a glance and say okay i know this animal so you don't need to go in the menu and find out which one i think that'll be a really interesting way to help identify and help you ultimately connect to your animals if they have some characteristics that tell them apart it kind of makes you endear them to them so that's going to be pretty cool and then we can see a medium we can see these reticulated giraffes we can see that this one's quite a lot brighter and I think there's a couple that's a bit darker in there. It's really interesting to see that kind of variation, especially with giraffes, because they're very famous for having no two giraffes have the same patterns, which have already added that kind of variation into the game. But one thing I think would be kind of cool is that a lot of these older male giraffes, as they get older, they kind of get dark patches all over their uh, body, 
so it kind of makes the spots less visible. So it'd be kind of cool if you like if you become an elderly male, you could kind of have that kind of variation, even like variation through aging. That would be a really cool uh, concept to explore. And here we've got the major differences, and we've got Timberwolves. Now, Timberwolves would be a perfect example to show off the variations within a species because Timberwolves are very, very diverse. They live in many different habitats across the America, uh, North America, Europe, and North Africa, and Asia. I mean, not Northern Africa, they live in like the Middle East. Yeah, all across the whole Arctic. That's the kind of concept, the whole Arctic. That's the word I was looking for. So they have a very huge range with a lot of different variations in colors and pelts. So it'd be really interesting to see. It'd be see if, um, cool to see if we can have melanistic morphs of all these animals where there's an over overpopulation or over saturation of melanin and you can get uh, eyeballed, which is like only certain sections don't have melanin, kind of like albino, but not in different areas. So they've got like these kind of spots all over them that are just pure white and all these kind of interesting variations that you can either get through random mutation or breeding certain individuals together to produce them that would be really cool in my opinion so like you can really work on breeding animals that with colors and uh, variations you want to see so that'd be cool and yeah it's just the wolf will be the perfect thing to show that off because sometimes when they breed with dogs you can get different dog variations in them like black wolves and things like that it's going to be cool so yeah thanks again for all your feedback on this including your thread sharing your videos and photos we cannot wait for you to get your ha all get your hands on this upcoming update and see the variations for yourself and what else we've been working on so that'll be quite interesting i kind of really hope how this will expand in the future because they haven't given us a full list yet but when they do i'll definitely make a video on it and it'd be really cool to see how they might expand onto that in the future with maybe more morphs or more color variations. It'd be cool if we can get like golden tabby tigers or white tigers as well. That'd be cool. Not just albinos, but like a proper white tiger. Um, that would be that's that'd be cool. And all these different morphs, because a lot of different uh, animals have these different morphs. It would be cool to see in game. Morphs is the technical term for these different variations. But one thing that would be really cool is how they can expand it for animals that may not have these color variations like elephants and rhinos is I've mentioned this a couple times but have tusk horn antler variations so you can have a bunch of different antlers so you can have maybe even tie that into genetic uh, rating too and genetics so like a healthy male that breeds with a healthy female they produce a young male with big tusks or something that would be really cool i really just want big tuskers in game and rhinos with big horns even though that require model changes i think that'd be definitely worth something exploring in the future to go with this since like the basic frameworks there and really just add a variation to the animals that may not have that kind of color variation that they're looking for so i think that'll be pretty cool and yeah i'm really excited to see what's going to be coming out of this update and yeah it's definitely going to come with a dlc i'm not going to speculate i have a feeling it's going to be either australian or maybe african or north american it's going to be something one of those that's what i think is coming but yeah i'm really excited to see what's going to be expanded onto this what's coming in the update and what else is going to be coming to planet zoo and i'll promise to keep you posted on them with these little videos i like doing these little videos they take a little effort <laughs> but they really give important news and help spread the news so yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys like and subscribe and if you want to make sure you get all my videos make sure you click that little bell see notif notification bell so you get notified whenever i upload something so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video like and subscribe and bye bye